for the 38-year-old Czech Republic veteran, a replacement rider in this. And Andres Johnson is a wild card from the outside. Peter Collins, 16,000 people here. I don't know, problematical. Flywood falling on the top of a tartan track, covered with jail. Our referee tonight, Tony Steele from Britain. Away goes Gollum on the inside in red. Coming across to challenge him in yellow. Andres Johnson in blue in third place. Matej Furia now goes wide to allow Tony Gaffer to come through. But a real battle out front. The Swede has experience in Sweden, of course, but not on this track, other than practice earlier in the week. But Andres Johnson, the wild card, looking very much at home. Andreas Johnson, what a start there, just to get ahead of Golov. He's riding pretty tight round the inside of the circuit. They've packed it down pretty hard here, and uh, quite slick at the moment, but dirt is being produced from the back wheel. 360 metres approximately this track, laid on top of a tartan running track. Narrow straights, big wide sweeping bends on a cold night with just over a lap to go. Andres Johnson, the wild card, he races of course for Coventry in the British League into his final lap, extending his lead with every turn of the wheel in front of this man, Thomas Golob in red. But Andres Johnson could go all the way tonight and do a Marty Dugard, a wild card to win the title. He's very much at home. The cheers of the Swedes. Great Andreas Johnson ahead of in second place, Thomas Golob. Third in white is Tony Casper, the veteran. Disappointment for Matty Furian, but real glory for this man. Andreas Johnson takes him through to heat seven. No chance of copping out, just inside. It's Nicky Pedersen, the Dane. Gate two, Todd Wiltshire, the Sydney sider from Australia. Peter Protasiewicz, the Pole, who's flattered to deceive in too many Grand Prix, and on the outside, Stefan Anderson. That is Peter Protasiewicz now. Finger on the button to control how long it takes before those tapes go up. And, uh, well, he's holding it a bit this time. The motor's roaring on the inside in red. A real start for Nicky Pedersen, moving in in second place. Coming from the outside, the Swedish wildcard, Stefan Anderson, but a great ride by Nicky Pedersen out front. He stripped the ball, a flyer from the start. He's picked his line. Stefan Anderson, the wildcard in second place. Todd Wiltshire struggling with that shoulder injury back in third. Tailed off at the back is Protasiewicz, but Nicky Pedersen is flying. And he's going very wide also, Tony, there. He got too much grip coming into the corner. The track is a little bit rough here. It's been packed down, but it is breaking up a little bit. And uh, certainly Nicky Pedersen is flying at the moment. The 24-year-old Dane doesn't need too many points tonight to be absolutely certain of qualifying in the top ten with an automatic place in next year's Grand Prix. A battle going on now in second place. Todd Wiltshire putting Stefan Anderson under pressure and stealing a march on him now. And Todd Wiltshire, vital for him to keep in the top ten. He's moved ahead of the wild card, Stefan Anderson. But Nicky Pedersen in the red helmet colour, the Dane out front, is having it very much as he pleased. Todd Wiltshire has come from nowhere to go past Stefan Anderson and Todd Wiltshire clinches second place. The wildcard Stefan Anderson is third. Protasiewicz desperately disappointing at the back. It means that Pedersen and Wiltshire march on to make themselves just one ride from getting through to the main event. Joe Screen. Adams on the inside in red. Nicholas Klingberg, gate two in blue from Sweden. Ron Anderson, the Danish captain, goes in white, gate three on the outside. Henrik Gustafsson, the Swede. Yeah, Lee Adams off gate one. I would suspect he'd be the favourite to make this start. The inside, uh, gate two and gate three, don't seem to be working too well. Well, let's see how they get away from the start. And again, a real flyer from the outside from Gustafsson on home territory. On the inside, Lee Adams holding pole position. Gustafsson going the long way round and looking for grit. Now coming through into second place, Nicholas Klingberg. Klingberg battling with Gustafsson in that second place. But Lee Adams, the Aussie from Mildura, out front in charge. Currently lying fifth in the Grand Prix series. And this ride alone will almost be enough to keep him in the top ten. Yes, a great ride for uh, Lee Adams. Bit of booking there from uh, Nicholas Klingberg and Brian Anderson but certainly there now in the blue Klingberg is uh, at the back but out front Lee Adams can't put a wheel wrong now he's holding on to the best line and he's just in front well a real mistake by Nicholas Klingberg on that top bend and now it have to come back because he looks set for a possible second place and the man that's come through to get that now in second place is Henrik Lestarts of the Swede as they go into the final lap 
going well is Lee Adams from Mildura, Australia. Adams certainly flying now, the 30-year-old, the Australian champion on five occasions, now being put under pressure on that final bend, but Lee Adams is surely going to hold it, has a chance to look back. Oh, and oh, Blake, it finished there. For my buddy, Nicholas Klingberg actually got through into second place. Lee Adams certainly held it in front. But Nicholas Klingberg sprang a surprise here. A real battle between him and Henrik Gustafsson. Desperately tight on the line. I think that Nicholas Klingberg got through. And that for the young Swede who races for Kings Lynn will be absolutely... As they go across the line. Adams in the red helmet colour. Klingberg second. Third was Gustafsson. That's how it finished. A desperately tight finish, Peter. And I think I read it right. <laughs> Peter Carlson on the inside. Carl Stone here, the Brit from Workington, goes from gate two in blue. Andy Smith, of course, struggling in the series at the moment. Andy Smith, he will be in the Grand Prix Challenge, along with uh, our own Gary Havelock. Uh, that's in a couple of weeks' time in Slovenia. 31 points, so could just about make the top ten. He makes the main event and does well. This is heat number four. Real flyer on the inside for Peter Carlson and left completely in the tape since Chris Louie. It can hardly be worse. It looks as if the tape hasn't gone up on his side. And, uh, well, I wonder what our referee will do. I'm sure the referee will stop that. I think we're going to get a restart. Tony Steele has stopped it. I don't... Right, it goes from gate two in blue. Andy Smith, currently unattached in Britain, goes from gate three in white. Chris Louie coming back from injury on the outside. Well, we'll have to see. Chris Louie has practiced here. He was struggling at Ipswich. He practiced after the meeting there, trying to get back into form. But uh, he might struggle against this field. He does get a good start here behind Peter Carlson. A great start by Chris Louie on the outside. Carlson leads in red. Louie picking up grip on the outside. Stonehill putting him under pressure to move into second place. No contest for Andy Smith at the back, but Carl Stonehewer moves into second place. And this is what we want to see for Stoney to try and make the top ten. A brilliant ride by him, but Peter Carlson is fast out front and gaining with every turn of his wheel again. Yeah, Carl Stonehewer needs this second place to progress to the next stage, and uh, this will be good enough for him. But out in front, Peter Carlson again from gate one. Really good ride. Well, I do know some of the Swedes were practicing on this track on Monday. I don't know if Peter Carlson was one of them. Certainly, Tony Ricardson had an outing here, and he didn't like the track. But all the Swedes so far are finding it very much to their liking. And this man, Peter Carlson, goes into the final lap with some uh, margin in hand here. Down the back straight he goes, stretching that lead. Carl Stonio, the Premier League rider from Workington, in second place. Not putting him under pressure, but certainly moving smoothly on to the next stage. Carlson wins it. Stonehill in second place. The Brit back in third place is Andy Smith. Chris Louie in the end disappointing at the back. Will have to go again. Real disappointment for him. The GP challenge beckons for Chris Louie. Uh, but for this man, well, Peter Carlson has a chance of making... ...on the inside. Henrik Gustafsson, the season-long replacement for Joe Screen. The Swede goes from gate two. Peter Protters, Jamie's gate three in white. On the outside, the British captain, Chris Louie. The last chance for Chris, of course, goes into this way down the standings. But beat the GP challenge in Slovenia. Away goes the starting margin. The tapes will go up, but they do. They fly up, and so too does Tony Casper. He flies from the inside. Chris Louie battling in second place now, but coming through the inside of him in blue is Henrik Gustafsson. Louie back in third, right at the back in white is Peter Protasiewicz. But it looks as if Tony Casper, the veteran Czech, along with Henrik Gustafsson, will march on to the next day. And Chris Louie will be on the boat home very, very quickly because he's now back in last place. Yeah, Henrik Gustafsson's trying the outside run there on Tony Casper. Tony's got away a little bit, but uh, Chris Louie's now at the back, really struggling. But uh, out in front. Tony Casper, he's getting all the grip. Well, certainly a fine ride by Tony Casper. He likes big, wide open tracks. This one, some 360 metres. And Tony Casper, the replacement for the injured Greg Valasek in this one. Valasek in turn, of course, is a rider replacement in this. But looking back as he goes into the final lap with some comfort, Tony Casper. He looks back as far as the man in second place in blue there, Henrik Gustafsson. Gustafsson going wide because the grip seems to move very, very quickly wide out of that inside. There's very little dirt left on the inside but Tony Casper has found enough to win it and in second place is blue is Henrik Gustafsson, Peter Protasiewicz in white and Chris Louie as we saw in the league action in the week really struggling to come back from his injury 
finishes in last place and gains just a single Grand Prix point. But the veteran Tony Casper, the lead on the inside, Andy Smith the Brit in blue, gate two, a last chance for him. Matty Burian from Slovenia goes from gate three. He'll be in the GP Challenge as well in his home country and could pose a threat there. Brian Anderson from the outside. Yeah, Brian on the outside, good gate position, but Andy Smith is in the same situation as Chris Louis. Settling, but now we're settled at the tapes. All four in a line for this heat number six. Remember, the last two go out. A fine start from the outside in yellow by Brian Anderson. Got pole position in red here, Stefan Anderson. The Swede in control, he's called right and now in second place in blue goes Andy Smith. One of his best Grand Prix rides for some while for Andy Smith now. And Andy Smith is in second place and could stay in this Grand Prix because now back in third place, the man in white there is Matty Burian. Right to the rear, Brian Anderson, Stefan Anderson in front and a good ride by Andy Smith. Yeah, he didn't actually make the best of starts, Andy, but he worked his way around that first corner, overtook a couple of riders, got into that qualification position in second place behind Stefan Anderson. This will be Andy Smith's best Grand Prix performance of the season if he moves on as far as the next heat, and that will be tremendous uh, boost for Andy Smith and his supporters in Great Britain. But Stefan Anderson, the Eastbourne rider, the wild card in this event, goes into the final lap in front in red. The red helmet colour worn by the Swedish wild card in second place now, the number 20. Andy Smith, of course, his best Grand Prix ride for some while. He's had 11 races so far and finished third twice and last in the remaining eight. But this is his first second place, and Andy Smith will be delighted with that. And going home, a Brian Anderson in third place and Matte Furian in fourth place with two points and one respectively. The Swedish fans have enjoyed the efforts of the Swedes in winning it. But our credit must go to the man in second place there, Andy Smith in blue. A tremendous ride by him, his best Grand Prix ride of the season. But Oxford, they're both in this. Andres Johnson, the Swede from Compton, while God is ready the inside. Lee Adams, the Aussie from Oxford, from Bill Dura, goes in blue gate two. Todd Wiltshire from Sydney at Oxford goes from gate three. And on the outside, in yellow there, is uh, Carl Stonehewer. I think Carl's going to go for the big lap round the outside on the first turn. Can he do it? Well, let's see, Colstone, he'll could make the top ten, a heat win here would help. Yes, he's got a flyer, he's chasing now, he's going to come back on the inside and put Andres Johnson under threat, but Colstone is in second place here now, but Colstone moves into first place, ahead of the man in red, Andres Johnson, the sweet cheering for Johnson, but Colstone is at his very best here. What, what a fantastic first lap there from Andy Smith, the way he just weaved his way through there, because Andreas Johnson is an absolute flyer. He takes no prisoners either, such a brave rider, but uh, the way Carl just slipped through there, unbelievable stuff there by Carl. A tremendous ride by Carl Stonehewer, and this could set him on his way to a place in the top ten, an automatic qualification for next year's Grand Prix. He's faster than anybody, a battle in second place, Lee Adams now picking it up, ahead of Andreas Johnson, and it's important for Adams too. He certainly the race in the top ten next year, but Lee Adams certainly wants to finish strongly, and of course he dropped down in recent performance, it's a deep dog battle there, but Adams now consolidates second place. Carl Stonio will go further and further away, some comfort in front for the Workington rider, a tremendous ride, he'll be feeling absolutely brilliant, second place going to Lee Adams in blue there, Andrews Johnson in red gets uh, third place, and uh, Todd Wiltshire, a well, disappointment for him, and he's got more work to do to stay in the Grand Prix, but what a ride by that man in the yellow and black helmet colour, the Workington rider had that photo finish in heat three to qualify for this stage of the competition. Some talent here, Peter, it's going to be a tight one. There is, and Thomas Golov coming from gate three. Gate three just isn't working at all here tonight. So, uh, you know, he's really got his work cut out. He's got Nicky Pedersen off gate one. We could have a... ...through to the main event, but uh, the other two, the last two, will have to go in heat nine and ten to stay in the event. Away they go on the inside in red, Pedersen. Coming across in yellow is Klingberg. Oh! goes Klingberg, down they go, oh a real pile up, Pedersen as well was involved in that, I don't know what our referee will say, Tony Steele, it seemed to me as if somehow uh, the man on the inside, Nicky Pedersen, and we've seen him do that before, came wide, was out of control and perhaps caused it Peter. Well, Nicholas Klingberg actually there, he's on the floor, he actually ran into the back of Nicky Pedersen's back wheel. I think Klingberg was having trouble to get the back wheel to step out. The back wheel just didn't break away quickly enough. Nicky Pedersen there rushing back to the pits. He wants to get that bike sorted out because he feels he'll be in the rerun. Uh, Nicholas Klingberg also. 
he could be in this rerun. We are still waiting for the verdict from the referee, but on the outside, Klingberg here, he makes a pretty good start there. He comes across the, the front of Golob. When they get to the first corner, it's Pedersen who leads. Now, this is the point where Pedersen just goes sideways. Klingberg gets a nudge from behind and runs into Pedersen's back wheel. Really, there was no problem there with Nicky Pedersen. Wasn't his fault at all. Klingberg, I think, had a nudge and ran into the back of Pedersen. So Look, realistically, we could have all four back in. Looked to be a gain of position. Peter Carlson that gave you the nudge, Peter, from yeah. the inside. Then Peter we had the Carl domino effect. Peter Carlson in the blues, very, very hard on the first corner. I mean, he was the one that gave Klingberg the nudge and actually nudged Pedersen's front wheel as well. So really, Peter Carlson in the blue, watch him here. He just catches the side of Klingberg, pushes him. Then he catches the front wheel of Pedersen. Really hard riding from Peter Carlson. We know he can do that, so if anyone was going to be excluded, I would suggest it would be Peter Carlson in the blue. And he got away without even coming down in Peter Carlson, and uh, certainly I was grossly unfair on Nicky Pedersen there, and certainly he was uh, certainly sinned against rather than the sinner. And problems for Nicholas Clint. Peter Carlson goes from gate two. Thomas got off the pole, who was out of all of that problem. And on, uh, he goes in white gate the starting marshal moves away, Cody still Singer is on the bus, up right the face and away they go. Thomas Gollum very slowly away, but very fast away Nicky Pedersen, and now Klingberg on the outside is looking for grip and finding it as he comes off the bed, and amazingly Gollum is back in fourth place and will have to go into an elimination heat, and that's very, very unusual because out front is red, and going fast is Nicky Pedersen. Nicky Pedersen there. Very, very quick, over the bumps, riding very wide. Look at that, on the back wheel. The bike just seems to pull and grip, almost pulling his arms out in places, but he just holds that motor absolutely flat out, Tony. Nicky Pedersen of Denmark, second place in yellow. Nicholas Klingberg of Sweden, tailed off at the back unusually. Thomas Gollop of Poland, what is the matter with Thomas Gollop? Peter Carlson's in third place. It stays like this. Carlson and Gollop will have to go in the elimination heat as they go into the final lap. Pedersen with some comfort ahead of Klingberg in second place. Klingberg went into this, of course, lying in eighth place. Pedersen in ninth, both set for a place in the top ten. But the cheers greet the first two here, two Scandinavians, and certainly Golop is now out of it in red. In first place there is Nicky Pedersen, second place is Klingberg in yellow, Peter Carlson in third, and Thomas Golob coasting around. Real disappointment for the main man from... Andy Smith in this one from the outside after his fantastic performance to finish second in heat number six. The full lineup we see there from the tapes on the inside. Andrews Johnson there in red. Next to him in blue is Thomas Golob. And in remember the last two eliminated. The first two go through to that main event. The tapes will fly up away they go. A fly from Smith on the outside, but a real fly on the inside from Andrews Johnson. And is Smith picking up grip as they lock up there? In white, Tony Casper seems to be lost. Smith has now gone to the back on the outside. Disappointment for him after a good ride before. But a great ride by Thomas Golob now, who seems to have got the edge back here ahead of Andreas Johnson. And Golob is now way, way out in front with Andreas Johnson in pursuit. He's done well to get to, from gate two to the lead because really Andreas Johnson was off gate one. Thomas, gate two, not very favourable. Now round the outside, Andreas Johnson's going round Golob. Golub, though, tries to close the gate on him. The grip is certainly moving there to that outside now. And that's where Andreas Johnson went before he closed the gate here now. But Golub is comfortably there, and certainly the battle is on. Golub in front now, Andreas Johnson in second place. And Golub now, with a lap to go, looks set to take the chequered flag for the first time tonight and march on to the main event to perhaps guarantee himself a place on the rostrum. Thomas Golub now, the Golub that we know, the Golub we've appreciated and the Golub that the fans across here from Poland have certainly appreciated wins it in blue ahead of it Red Andreas Johnson and disappointment really behind them for Tony Kasper and Andy Smith who can disappear once again Andy Smith his best Grand Prix performance for some while in reaching this stage but those Polish fans the Polish flags are there and mighty happy with the among those that count going into this final series Peter Carlson on the inside Todd Wiltshire the Aussie a last chance for both of them and Todd Wiltshire wants this to make sure he gets a place in the top 10. Stefan Anderson and Henry Gustafsson don't count. Henry Gustafsson and Stefan Anderson getting as close to the inside as he can on gate number three. 
up by the tapes, away on the inside goes Peter Carlson in red, coming across in yellow from the outside, Gustafsson, assuming in blue is Tom Wilkes, an important race for the Aussie now, who moves into second place, Wiltshire, the Aussie, who races for Oxford, behind Peter Carlson in red, now Wiltshire picking up grip, because Carlson has backed up, oh, Carlson's got going again, I thought his boat had gone completely here now, but Todd Wilkes is in front in blue, Carlson, the chase is on for Gustafsson. I'm sure that was wheel spin that Peter Carlson had there, Tony, the track is very hard and slick round the inside, a lot of spin there, riders are struggling with spin, but if they get in that dirt on the outside, that's where all the grip is, and that's where Todd Wiltshire went to overhaul Carlson. Well, for Todd Wiltshire, this ride should ensure himself of a place in the top ten next year, because he must get enough points, he's guaranteed at least five if he goes there, which takes him on to 56 and he should be set for a place in next year's Grand Prix Series by a top 10 finish with this one. Todd Wiltshire in blue, ahead of him red Peter Carlson, who's still got a battle to earn his place, but both will move on to the main event. Round the top bend with a chequered flag in their sights, and Todd Wiltshire in blue will be mighty pleased to get that heat out of the way. Peter Carlson in second place in a red, equally happy, but disappointment for the wild card. Stefan Anderson and fellow Swede Hedrick Gustafsson. But, well, one Swede marches on Peter Carlson, along with that Aussie Todd Wiltshire, who wins the heat and moves through to heat. In machines and Jason Crump going off gate one. That's the best start position. What can he do with it? Remember, of course, if Jason Crump... Remember, this and 13 more heats to go. Our starting mark has moved away in front of a capacity crowd. Up by the tape, Jason Crump makes it with a real fire on the inside. Carl Stonehewer is at the back and disappointing. The man in blue, Greg Hancock, makes a big mistake there to allow Peter Carlson to go round the outside. But Crump is absolutely well perfect. Stonehewer disappointed at the back, but in third place, Greg Hancock, a mistake, and he will struggle now to finish in the first two. Yeah, I think Jason Crump's riding as good as anyone in the world at the moment, probably the best, and uh, the way he's made that start, he's not had any practice tonight on this circuit, straight out there, after the others have been out, and he's just going away from the opposition. Well, Jason Crump, emphatically, Hill still has a chance of taking that world title, but I wonder if he'll prove that performance in Berlin in the first Grand Prix, desperately disappointing for him, but certainly he's flying here, a real flyer, Jason Crump here now, and goes into the final lap with a considerable margin in hand and the man in second place the popular speed here is Peter Carlson in the yellow helmet colours Crump is stretching his lead down that back straight and Crump is going to win with some comfort ahead of Peter Carlson Greg Hancock packs up at the back now and coming through to third place is Carl Stonehewer but Greg Hancock will officially get fourth place it'll mean that he'll have to go again Greg Hancock to avoid finishing in the bottom two and for Greg Hancock it's absolutely desperate now to get in that top ten but for Jason Crump his world championship hopes are still mathematically very much alive but Tony Rickardson wins this heat he goes through to heats 19 or 20 Oh, sorry, rather the heats before that, 17 and 18, and will guarantee him at least seven points. So, let's see what happens here. He has to finish in the... Yeah, Mark Laram, Tony, he needs a good ride as well, because he's 11th in the standing. Mark Laram, we've got a problem, though, on the outside here, Andreas Jonsson. I think there's somebody in the way, standing in the vision of the green light. He can't see the green light here properly, so... Uh, He's actually calling for that uh, obstruction to be moved. Get through to the semi-finals, have a chance of getting into the top ten. Away goes our Sali Marshall, up by the tape for the inside, a real fly from Tony Ricardson. The Swedish cheers ringing around this Olympic Stadium in Stockholm because their man's in front and their man now knows that he's virtually got one hand on that World Championship trophy out front. Tony Ricardson is flying, Mark Laram is moving into second place, and that's what we want to see ahead of Andreas Johnson. Mark Laram in the blue helmet colour, vitally important for the current world champion to stay in the Grand Prix next year. Tony Ricardson in red is out front, but what a battle here. Andreas Johnson goes through and picks up grip, and now Mark laram has gone right back to last, and we'll have to do it all over again, and Mark Laram's in trouble now. But uh, Mickey Pedersen goes wide, Laram's into third place, it's a deep battle. Mark Laram really struggled there, he's been pushed right back to third, he needed better than this, but out in front, Tony Rickardson. 
Rick Carson is looking a world champion all over. Already three times he's won the world title. Could he be on the way to title number four in this very stadium in his home country tonight? Nicky Pedersen is the man in second place there. Now putting Rick Carson under pressure. But the chairs of the three. Well, they know. Andres Johnson, sorry, in second place. Mark Moran is third in blue. Disappointment for him. He will have to go again. But uh, certainly the Swedish fans here, they think that Tony Rickardson has already won the world title. There is the legendary Swede, Tony Rickardson, with him perhaps the pretender, the young Swede. Side is Mikhail Carlson in a red. In gate two in blue is Ryan Sullivan, the Australian. Lee Adamsonville, Dura in a white gate three. And on the outside is Todd Wiltshire, the Aussie in yellow. The beat order does now, they can all see the green light. Referee Tony Steele looks down on them. Referee Tony Steele delays the take this time, but in the end they fly up, coming across to the outside in yellow is Tom Wilcher. He's headed by Mikhail Carlson, but now a real mistake by Brad Sullivan, who goes back to last place. At the race out front sees Mikhail Carlson ahead of in yellow, Tom Wilcher. Lee Adams is battling too in white. Adams is on the inside. Could he make second place? In front, in command, Mikhail Carlson. Michael Carlson, 10th in the standings. Mark Laram, 11th for Mark's course. Michael Carlson should be having a bad race, but the thing is, Michael Carlson is really on form at the moment, riding so well everywhere, and uh, from here on, he's going so good in this one as well. Michael Carlson, the 1994 World Under-21 champion. He reached the A-final in Poland, his first roster finish in 26 Grand Prix, and going well here tonight. I wonder if he can make another final. Packing up there is Tom Wiltshire. Really disappointing for him as they go into the final lap. Michael Carlson in red, ahead of Lee Adams in white. Wiltshire will have to go again. So too will well, Ron Sullivan, so disappointment for them, but no disappointment for the Swede. Michael Carlson here in red, second in white, Lee Adams. And uh, well, Lee Adams will be delighted with that. But the other two, Ron Sullivan and Todd Wiltshire, desperately disappointing. Sort out the minor placings. Billy Hamill's on the inside in this one in red. Willie Holt of the Norwegian goes in blue, gate two. Nicholas Klingberg, the Swede, in white, gate three. And on the outside, Thomas Gollum. So enigmatic tonight, Thomas Gollum. Yeah, the great thing about tonight is he automatically qualifies. A long way to go before that. Thomas Gollum in the foreground in the yellow helmet colour. Number seven in the Grand Prix series. This year, the 30-year-old Paul from Wittgott. Away they go, Billy Hamill's mark on the inside, and Billy Hamill, is this the best of Billy Hamill? He's locked up slightly, Golov's gone by, and now, oh, down at the back there, disappointment for Rudy Holter, and Rudy Holter is on the track, I'm sure that he'd probably be excluded, the referee has stopped the race, Rudy Holter, surely the prime cause of the stoppage, I'm not sure he didn't lock up with Billy Hamill, as Hamill lost ground there, but we'll have to see that again, disappointment though for Rudy Holter, but if Holter tumbles out, that could help the chances of Mark Ram to make the top ten. The referee has excluded the rider in blue, Rene Holter, as the prime cause of the stoppage, Peter, so there'll be a three-man restart. Yeah, I think Rooney was at fault there. Um, he didn't really get a tangle with anybody. He fell down, I think, of his own accord. Blue misses the start completely. Going into the corner there, Klingberg next to him straightens up. Holter overslides that fight there, loses it really, all of his own accord. He tests the air fence, he's the first one into that air fence tonight. And, uh, you know, really there, the trouble started coming into the corner when the track was so slippery on that polished part of the circuit. He tried to correct it in the deep heavy dirt on the outside, and really the bike just had a mind of its own. Here the bike just goes completely sideways, almost throws him over the high side. He stays with it, tries to correct it, but hit some heavy dirt there, look, flicks him off again over the high side. That was a double high side to meet only, off into the fence and uh, excluded. Well, he's written in 41 previous Grand Prix, all of them, Billy Hamill. I must say, Tony, the track here is quite inconsistent. There's some wild on these types of tracks, and uh, he could uh, get in all kinds of problems on the circuit. 8.14, away we go now, Billy Hamill on the inside in red, Gollum blocks up, Gollum's in trouble at the back now, but now picks up dirt around the outside, a marvellous recovery, but Hamill gets the speed, and now Gollum's been put under pressure by Klingberg, Hamill has picked it up again, recovered well, and Klingberg is pressing Gollum for second place, and comes through into second place, cheers there as the pole, looks beaten here by the Swede, the Swedish fans, but round Gollum goes, a real battle in second place, Billy Hamill out front, he's in class form, 
at the moment, but now Klingberg in white is chasing Howell, and Golob comes back again off the trip. How did Golob sneak through that gap there? But Golob just doesn't look fast on the straight. Nicholas Klingberg's pulling yards out of Golob on the straight. Golob was right round in the dirt, he'd gone by him twice and just couldn't get through. But Billy Hamill out in front, what a ride. A big move by Klingberg to ensure that he gets a top ten place. This could be absolutely vital. He can hold on the Rams' chances, but Billy Hamill in red now. Down the back straight he goes, and Billy Hamill becomes yet another heat winner, surely, from gate number one, the famous gate. Second place, here goes to Nicholas Klingberg to speed. Thomas Golob has packed up at the back. Thomas Golob has given up at the back. For the front two march on, Billy Hamill ahead of Nicholas Klingberg, and Hamill will be delighted with that, because that means that Billy Hamill now is certain to have a place in the top three riders are battling for a place in the top ten. Grant Sullivan is certain to win through, but Carl Stonehill and Nicky Pedersen and Brittany Holter here all are fighting for a vital top ten place. We are riding for his uh, Grand Prix life here. Could do himself big favours by staying in here, in here and finishing the top ten and not having to go for the challenge. What to do for Carl Stodio? He's on the inside, he's got the best possible start. Carl Stodio takes the others wide. Carl Stodio down the back straight in front for the grip being picked up by Ron Sullivan. But now Stonehewer goes wide and Stonehewer battling for his Grand Prix future. Could this ride decide that Stoney makes the top ten next year? His hopes are still pretty much alive as he goes round that top bend. Carl Stonehewer ahead of Ron Sullivan back in third place. Nicky Pedersen, his future could be in doubt. Brittany Holter's future at the rear, totally in doubt. This is going to be a battle all the way. Carl Stowe, you're looking real good here, Tony. Out in front, not for the wheel wrong yet. Dan, look back, he's just concentrating every inch of that circuit just to win this race. He still has a long way to go because Mikhail Carlson is going well. Nicky Pedersen could drop out. Carl Stoney will need to make the semi-finals to finish ahead of Nicky Pedersen. But he's on his way to do that and Pedersen is tumbling out in this one because Pedersen's back in third place. Carl Stonehewer in the red helmet colours, the Workington man is flying. He got here by coming third in heat 11, and now he's won this heat 15. Carl Stonehewer, second place in blue, goes to Ron Sullivan. Both of those march on. The last two are eliminated. Nicky Pedersen and Rudy Holter could go out and go home. But what a ride by Carl Stonehewer. And he here all night, and Mark Laram's got to make the most of this. He really has got to capitalise on it. On the outside, Todd Wiltshire, that's a good gate also, but the middle two, I'm afraid, Golob and Hancock off gate two and three. This promises to be a real battle. We're rooting for Mark Aram on the inside in blue. Greg Hancock's in white. Big riders, big stars in this one. Mark Aram gets the start he wanted. Mark Aram's out front from gate one. Mark Aram's now being put under pressure, but he's where the trip is. And Mark Aram picks it up now that back straight ahead of Thomas Golob. The Ram and Golob in front, a world champion. Greg Hancock back in third place. And if Hancock's out, he doesn't make the top ten. And he turns in the GP challenge. And he is battling for second place. But Mark Laram is away down that straight. And Mark Laram can march on. Yeah, I know Mark Laram's changed gear there down in the pits. And uh, he's got everything now sorted out with that bike here in Stockholm and he's just way, way out in front now. Surely he can't go wrong in this race because he's riding the quick line. It'll take a real brave man to overtake him. What a battle in second place. Golov fighting for his life against Greg Hancock. Hancock in white on the inside. Golov goes wide. Hancock's in front. Golov will get the grip into the final lap and Golov can be tumbling out here in Stockholm because Greg Hancock has kept his hopes alive. Thomas Golov could miss out on the roster place here and look at this because Mark Laram is going to take the checkered flag and Mark Laram is still pretty much alive in second place is Greg Hancock third is Thomas Golov it means that Golov disappears out of that in third place it means that Golov gets six GP points takes him on to 89 that should be enough but Ryan Sullivan is threatening but this here Golov in second place runs very very wide Greg Hancock he was a predator in this one. He was just sat there on the inside. And uh, Golov really, again, not at the races. Like we say, I think he's the towel's been thrown in by Thomas. His world championship gone has gone. He wants to be world champion. Second isn't good enough for someone like Thomas Golov. And he knows it's gone here now. And on the outside, 
Again, he's so fast round that fence, but he has gone far too wide there. Greg Hancock's nipped round the shortest way to take that second place. Going then for the next race, remember. And Jason Crump, Mikhail Carlson, Andres Johnson, the wild card, and Nicholas Klingberg. Three sweets and the Aussie go in heat 17 here. And Jason Crump is still in line. On gate two. Heat 17 is underway, almost, now starting Marshall. Derbez jangling at the pace because Ryder's futures depend upon the result of this one. Not a really satisfactory start. It was jumped a little bit by Andrews Johnson, but Jason Crump from the inside gate is really going, and there's a problem here because the man in yellow, Nicholas Klingberg, is definitely unhappy with that, and the referee has stopped the race and will probably order a restart with all four riders. Yeah, Andreas Johnson moved on the starting gate there. He took a jump at it, the tape went up, and it actually worked to his advantage because he was up to second place. No exclusions, the referee ordering a restart with all four riders. Carlson in blue goes to gate two. Andreas Johnson in white from gate three. Nicholas Klingberg in yellow from the outside. Three minutes in that meeting at Sheffield. Here we go, heat 17. Away goes our starting marshal. This time the start satisfactory and certainly satisfactory for Jason Crump round the outside. Oh, putting him under pressure but locking up is Andreas Johnson. Nicholas Klingberg's at the back, moving through in the third place in blue. Michael Carlson. We want Michael Carlson to struggle here to help Mark Aram. But out front, Jason Crump is at the front once again for the inside gate. In second place now in white is Andreas Johnson, but moving into second. Second place is Michael Carlton. Yeah, the way Jason comes riding, he really does want this world champion. He's got the spirit for it, he's good enough for it. He's riding there, miles out in front, so hard, so good on the bike. Will it be this year or will it be next year? Look at the battle in second place because Johnson picked up grip there. Michael Carlson's in front of him. Michael Carlson is holding second place, but that race is not over. Nicholas Klingberg is tumbling out, and Nicholas Klingberg's threat uh, place in the top ten could be under threat, depending on how the other results go. He'll have to go again, Nicholas Klingberg, in 19 or 20. But Jason Crump now is through to the last eight, and Jason Crump knows full well that his hopes are still alive ahead of his blue in second place. Michael Carlson, and while the best struggle, Yellow, Klingberg gets third place, Johnson in the end in fourth place. That's how they finish. The last two will have to go again, but Jason Crump knows that his hopes are very much alive. He's certainly world champion. Billy Hamill goes from gate two. Peter Carlson goes from gate three in white. Lee Adams, the Aussie, from the outside in yellow. It's going to be tough there. Tough for Carlson from the unfortunate gate three, but Ricardson in pole. Yeah, Tony's been showing the... Third. On the outside, Lee Adams, high point scorer. This is evening so far. Way to go in front is Rickardson. Rickardson, the cheers are going round the stadium. But this man, if he holds it here, he's second at the moment to Lee Adams. But second place will be enough for Tony Rickardson to be the world champion for the fourth time. Out front, Lee Adams is gaining. But now Rickardson is under pressure. Perhaps from Peter Carlton. He'll be inside in blue. It's Billy Hamill. Hamill putting him under pressure as well, but Ricardson now is going through putting Adams under pressure. What a battle we've got. This man can be a world champion at the end of this one. Ricardson locks up. Ricardson makes a mistake. Adams goes by. Ricardson's in second place. He's under pressure here with just over a lap to go. Billy Hamill in blue is putting Ricardson under pressure. Lee Adams out front, but Ricardson now, if he holds second place, Ricardson will be the world champion. Rickardson is still there, but only just. He's been put under pressure. Hamill has dropped back. Out front, it's Adams. But Rickardson now looks sure of second place. And Rickardson is going to be the world champion for 2001. Second place is enough to give him the title behind the race winner, Lee Adams. But we now know that that man there, Tony Rickardson, is the world champion for the fourth time of asking. And Rickardson wins the Swedish Grand Prix for the second time. He won it in 98. And Rickardson now knows that he is the world champion for 2001. Sorry, they don't come much harder than that one. The pressure was really on him and it was telling. He allowed Lee Adams to go round him first. But uh, Tony's been there before, he can handle that pressure, but with Billy Hamill snapping at his heels and Peter Carlson, he really had to keep his head together there. Just four laps of unbelievable riding there from Tony Rickardson. 
He's been world champion. This is his first or fourth world title. He's won three of the Grand Prix system, one in the old one day, one off world final system. And now he's four times world champion. And I'm sure he's just so glad to get that race out of the way. And the pressure will now just release. He will just feel absolutely fantastic. Many people suggested he would want to clinch it in front of his own fans here in Stockholm. The chequered flags, the Swedish national flags. We know that Lee Adams won the heat, but, well, this man, world champion, Tony Rickardson, and, well, what a performance. Uh, Matt Ford is there, the uh, full promoter. Among those giving him the bumps and well a traditional welcome. Even Mark the Ram is there helping with that. Jason Crump is there with the hug. There's Mark the Ram congratulating the world champion, the retiring one. Thomas Golov congratulates him as well. They're all there and they're honouring a man who surely is one of Speedway's legendary greats. Mark the Ram said this week. Cautious, but on the outside of him, Lee Adams knew that dirt was there. Lee just struck there on that first turn. Lee knew that the quick line was the outside. I think Tony was just trying to be careful, but just look, the action as well, because here Rickardson tries to go round the outside of Lee Adams. Tony hadn't given up. Look at that there, controlled wheelie, sideways on the back wheel, looking across there for Billy Hamill, who's also snapping at his heels. But uh, Tony just kept there, kept his head. Back to All right, now it's absolutely fantastic being on home ground and the packed stadium. It can't be much better than this. Now the crowd have just carried you through today, haven't they? Yeah, they sure did, and I can really hear the cheer me, cheer me on through the helmet actually when I was racing because they're sitting so close. So it's great. So what is next for you? What what else have you got in store for us? Uh, hopefully a semi-final win after this. <laughs> it hasn't finished for you. You still intend to win this one tonight? Yeah, I will sure try to. You know, it's going to be a little bit emotional, but I'm going to go out and give all I got and see how far I can take me. Absolutely fantastic. Well, best of luck for the next one. All right, thank you. But Tony Rickelstone here is battling for one of those places. He's in red. Greg Hancock in this one goes in blue gate two. Nicholas Klingberg, the sweet Tate Tatum, goes in gate three. And on the outside, it's Peter Carlson in yellow. The last two riders will be Nicholas Klingberg. We're all in the shake-up, as is Peter Carlson. Important race this for these fellows. Away they go on the inside, trying to keep it down in blue. Hancock struggles. Stoney picks it up. Stoney's in front in red for five on the outside. One and two goes the man in blue, Greg Hancock. But now looking up at the back in white is Klingberg. Stoney will have to go again to get into that second place. Greg Hancock is out front in blue. Carl Stoney is back in third because Peter Carlson has made it into second place. And Peter Carlson has threatened by the Rams top ten place. If he goes all the way, there's lots going to happen yet. Hancock out in front, Carl Stonia was in second place, but a bit of a mistake there, but he's also catching, he's coming on the inside now of Peter Carlson. A big rise is for Carl Stonia, he's come through, he's relegated Peter Carlson, Stoney's now got the part of the track that he wants, Greg Hancock's out front, Greg Hancock going well, Carl Stonia as they go into the final lap, looks as if he's going to clinch second place, Greg Hancock round the top bend, Carlson work to do in third place, Stoney who are holding his ground. Stoney who are now under pressure again. Hancock isn't. Stoney, can he hold it in the red helmet colours? Carl Stoney who are, could be through. One race. Oh, it's going to be tight. Definitely tight. And I think Peter Carlson beat him on the line. Just in yellow ahead of Carl Stoney who are, will have to see that again. But it looked to me as if Peter Carlson just came through in time on second place. And our referee, Tony Steele, will watch that very, very closely. I think uh, I think Carl got that one, Tony. It was very close, but I'm pretty sure Carl got that, and uh, I don't mind saying I hope he did. Well, Peter, I hope he did, but I have a few Crona with you on my eyesight on that one on the line, because I reckon that Peter Carlson it was who beat Carl Stone here on the line. It's an important place. We'll have to see exactly what happened, and here's a chance to see it again. Let's see it. It's tight. It's very tight. Very, very tight. Oh, how do you split them? Uh, Carl Stoney, I'm sure, Tony. Well, we need the very best of photo finish cameras to separate them. We do it, of course, in the Elite League meetings, but look at that. Well, what's the referee going to do? There's a lot of money resting for these riders here, and I'm not quite sure. The referee is going to have a look at that several times over, I'm sure. 
And I think... Cole Stonehewer, Peter Carlson tumbles out. Cole Stonehewer gets second place there in red. In third place in yellow goes to Peter Carlson. Nicholas Klingberg was nowhere. ...that we had earlier, the dirt has now been spread pretty evenly. We haven't got the rough parts of the circuit. It is real flat-out racing now, at just at the right time. Mark Garab on the favoured gate one. Gate two is Ron Sullivan, the Aussie. He's battling, of course, for places in the top order. Good get there is Billy Hamill, former world champion, of course. Desperately to get into Billy Hamill. Certain to be there, but Mark Garab has not the start he wanted, and now he's going to have to work around the outside, but he does pick it up there. And now combine on the outside goes Sullivan. Sullivan's got grip on the outside. A top two place here would do for Mark Moran. And he's in second place. Behind him in white is Billy Hamill. Right at the rear in yellow is Andreas Johnson. But way, way out front now is Ron Sullivan in blue. And second place could be enough to take Mark Moran on, but he's got to concentrate. Yeah, Ryan Sullivan's had a great ground free yearly just... Uh, this year, just quietly getting on with it. He's fourth overall at the moment, but Mark Laram is chasing him. This will be good enough for Mark to put him into the later stage and uh, just what he needs. If Mark Laram can stay in second place, if he through to the semi-finals, and then he can pile up the points towards a possible place in the top ten. But there in blue, Ron Sullivan, as they go into the final lap, has the race in control. Mark Laram at the moment, a comfortable second place in red. The man in third place is Billy Hamill. Desperate disappointment for him, but he went into the series for this meeting in sixth place and will certainly be in the top ten and an automatic Grand Prix rider for next year. But Ron Sullivan and Mark Moran go through to the semi-final. Billy Hamill and the man Andreas Johnson at the back in yellow. They will depart with eight and seven points respectively. But for that man, Ron Sullivan, perfectly happy, marches up the standings, consolidates his fourth yeah. position. The white helmet colours in yellow on the outside is Tony Ricardson. And uh, certainly work to do for all of them, Peter. But uh, Mark Laram engaged among the pigeons because he would jump ahead of both of them. The starting marshal moves away. On the inside, once again, is Jason Crump. They want to win the Grand Prix. Jason Crump's in front. Mark Laram moves in at second place. Squeezing out, Greg Hancock inside him. Coming up on the outside in yellow is Tony Ricardson. But Mark Laram, the deposed world champion, has a battle in second place against the man who's just clinched the title. And Tony Ricardson, if it stays like this, would miss out on the final. But Jason Crump is going to win this heat with some comfort if he keeps going. But vital for us is the place of Mark Laram in second place. Yeah, just look at the gap between Jason Crump and Mark Laram in second. Jason Crump's going like the wind out in front. Mark Laram having a great ride also in second, being able to keep uh, Tony Rickardson, the new world champion, behind him. Well, a tremendous ride by Mark Laram, and if he can make the A final, he's guaranteed 16 points. And if he does that, well, he will go ahead of Nicky Pedersen as well. And he could face a ride off even with Nicholas Klingberg. The mathematics are complicated, but Mark Laram, if he holds second place, will be in the final. And Mark Laram should make the top 10 of the Grand Prix with the mathematics to work out. But the heat is going to be won by Jason Crump, who Jason Crump wins through ahead to Mark Laram. The old world champion, Mark Laram, beats the new world champion, Tony Ricardson. And Mark Laram has come alive again. That man, Jason Crump, a truly tremendous ride by him. We've said that so many times by Jason Crump. We'll have to see what happens here. Work it out after heat 22, this semi-final. Let's see what Carl can do. Carl Stonehill needs a top two place to make the top ten for next year. Away they go. Stonehill is now going to try and move into second place. Picks up the grip. Adams locks up in front. Stonehill's going round the lock. Carl Stonehill now, but look who's come through on the inside there in the blue helmet colour. That's Michael Carlson, the threat to Mark Laram. Oh, it's all turning upside down. But Carl Stonehill, if he stays in this position, could make the top ten. Oh, he's made a mistake. Carl Stonehill, it's all over for the Workington rider. Sadly for him now here, disappointment. He was looking so good, but out front, Michael Carlson is looking good. And Michael Carlson, too, is posing a threat here in second place in red. It's Lee Adams. Lee Adams, we know, has qualified for next year. 
And if Michael Carlson does this, well, Nicky Pedersen could be out of the top ten. And the last two places will be filled by Michael Carlson and Mark Laram with a lap to go. It blew Michael Carlson there. The Swedish cheers ringing round the stadium here as Michael Carlson down the straight with a little bit in hand here. It blew and he's going to be through to the final. And the man to go with him will be Lee Adams, the Aussie. And look at this, it's going to be close to the line for second place again. Well, I wonder if Brian Sullivan beat Lee Adams on the line. We know that Michael Carlson is through to the final. But it... Over the finish here, we can see it's very, very close. It looks as though the rider in yellow there, Ryan Sullivan, has actually got uh, that second place. But no doubt about Michael Carlson. Again, here over the finish, on the inside, I think the rider in yellow, Ryan Sullivan, I think it was him. But uh, we've still got to wait here for the referee to call that. Well, a second close call. And Adam still needs to finish in front of Michael Carlson. It looks as if both will now finish in front of Nick Carlson, the Swede from the inside, current world champion. Now, Lee Adams in blue goes from gate two, the Australian who races for Oxford. Carl Stonia, the Premier League rider from Workington, goes in white from gate three and on the outside. Another former world champion, Greg Hancock, who won. Yeah, difficult call, and the uh, riders having to keep their engines warm here. It's a cold night here now. Get a bit of frost at this time of the year here in uh, Sweden. Well, Tony Rickardson could get 15 Grand Prix points here to add to his 106 that he came into the meeting with if he wins this one. Away on the inside, he's going to be put under pressure by the man in white, Carl Stonehewer. Stonehewer, though, locks up on the inside and now will finish up in last place. No, he doesn't. He gets through to third on the inside of Greg Hancock. And now Carl Stonehewer in white is going to chase Tony Rickardson. What a effort by Carl Stonehewer. But Rickardson will finish fifth on the night. He's world champion already, of course, if he wins this consolation final. Yeah, fantastic atmosphere here tonight for Tony out in front. The crowd love this. World champion, this will be his last ride tonight. But uh, if he goes out here with a win, they know he's world champion. And Carl Stonehewer is right on his tail. Well, Carl Stonehewer will get 14 Grand Prix points from this, but it won't be enough to take him in the top 10. 14 of is in second place. And sadly, he will just miss out, but only just. That engine failure in the last race could have cost him dear. But Carl Stonehewer now may have to give bets to Lee Adams. Adams is putting him under pressure here in second place. But Tony Ricardson is the man that's going to take the chequered flag for his final race here tonight. And Tony Ricardson will get the consolation of fifth place here. And Tony Ricardson now is uh, going to take it, yes, with some comfort. And second place goes to Lee Adams. Carl Stonehewer back in third. And well, Tony Ricardson gets the cheers of the Swedish fans here because they know they're watching a world champion already four times over. He's since the 2001 title tonight. He may not have won the Swedish Grand Prix, but the Swedes here will remember that Tony Rickardson won his world title in his very own home territory. Congratulations to him. There's Greg Hancock, a past world champion, of course, congratulating him. The checkered flag, of course, indicating... Well, Jason Trump has reached 11 A finals before this one in the Grand Prix series. It's his 12th A final. What a record. A tremendous ride. He's the youngest ever win. This is the Hampton, of course, back in the position This is the grand final. Oh! And the man on the tapes, Ron Sullivan, I think, broke the tapes there. I think Mark, uh, Mark Laram was in the uh, tapes first, Tony. Mark touched those tapes and that caused the, the hold-up. Then Ryan Sullivan went, but I think the main culprit is Mark Laram, and we could see him excluded. Yes, Mark Laram has been excluded by a referee, and disappointment for him. His chances to, of taking the Grand Prix title and finishing in glory. Our referee, Tony Steele, held the tapes for what seemed an absolute age, and Mark Laram will be far from happy from that. We know what happened when he got excluded in Voyance, of course. He was absolutely furious. He can't believe it. There's Norrie Allen, his manager, with him. And Mark Laram will be desperately disappointed about that. And he's saying, well, there's uh, Craig Cummings, who uh, works, of course, with them. Um... Concentration. Mark was moving slightly first. And, you know, there he is in white. He's just creeping. But what happens is when you rev those bikes, when you're revving up that engine, it's probably doing 11,000 revs on that start and the clutch can tend to pull you into the tape you've got the clutch pulled right in but the thing is when you've got all those revs on the bike he's trying to creep forward and i'm sure that's what happened his clutch just pulled him into that bottom tape 
and that was his race over. So Neil Middleditch, the English team manager there, looking at that. We see it again, and Mark Laram definitely touched it first. Ron Sullivan crashed them, and referee Tony Steele has made, I'm sure, the right decision, seeing that at close range. Mark Laram has to accept that decision. It's perhaps summed up his season, a season of frustration, but in the end, the fourth place that he get will provide him with 16 Grand Prix points. But just three riders in what's now the final here. The racing for Rostrum places. All are guaranteed a place on that Rostrum. Yet again, Solidate in second place. He's hanging back for the takes away they go. Jason Crump on the inside yet again from gate one. His fast. He will come wide. He will pick up more grip. He will pick up speed. He's been chased on the inside by Carlson. The battle is joined by the Swede who's come across. Crump will go again. Crump has gone again. But the battle is not over. What a race we've got here. Michael Carlson, he's been the dark horse all night here. But look at this. He's putting Crumpy under massive, massive pressure on the inside. He wants to get on the outside line where Jason is. He just can't get wide enough. Will that be crucial? And I think it is by looking at the distance now Crumpy's got. Crump has gone close to the fence when it mattered to pick up the drive he needed. And now Crump has gone clear. And now Carlson in second place is being put under pressure by Ron Sullivan. But what an effort by Jason Crump. It looked as if he was in trouble. But now with a lap to go, Jason Crump is on his way to another Grand Prix title. Jason Crump will be the Swedish Grand Prix champion here in Stockholm. And what a tremendous season he's had. As they come round the bend there, Jason Crump looks back, he knows, he takes the checkered flag, and Jason Crump is the Grand Prix champion, or would have been if he had seen Tony Ricardson back behind. Jason Crump is the Grand Prix champion here tonight, the Swedish Grand Prix champion, but overall world champion is still Tony Ricardson, but surely Jason Crump will be a champion in the not too distant future. Yeah, unbelievable, Jason. Fantastic riding here. The atmosphere is just unbelievable. A Green. Thomas Gollum has finished in third place. Australians Ron Sullivan and Lee Adams packing in there. And, uh, well, Billy Hamill, Michael Carlson finished seventh. Todd Wiltshire, the third Australian, into that top eight there as we look down those things and look at the points there because now the vital ones Mark Laram and Nicholas Klingberg the last two to make the top ten and Nicky Pedersen will be joined by Carl Stone who are Greg Hancock Rudy Holter Peter Carlson in the Grand Prix final Greg Vanasek doesn't make it because of course he was a replacement rider there are plenty more who will all the original Grand Prix riders from this year entitled to a place Brian Anderson, Matty Furian, Peter Protasiewicz and Andy Smith will all make the challenge. The others will ride a replacements during the series. Chris Louie, although he finished last in the series and had a disappointing day.